So welcome to the gallery for a quick but important video about furniture from the past. I suppose this is buckling under its own weight, much like our own attention spans under the weight of social media. But nevertheless, bear with me. This is a pretty critical message in furniture history, which many people could convey better than me, probably because they're not in direct view of the Church of Scientology and they wouldn't have L. Ron Hubbard present for their lecture. But I contend with that every day, successfully. What I don't contend with every day is the widespread use of such an ambiguous term, antique. And now, this word does not help us understand what types of furniture from the past are valuable and why. It just designates anything 100 years old or more. But furniture collectors and historians focus on pieces which are almost 200 years old or more, which generally predate the year 1840. And for good reason, because by 1840, the world becomes industrialized. And so, so much of what we qualify as antiques actually comes from this post-industrial period, and these pieces are the result of industry, which produced more furniture at lower cost. And they are old, but they're devoid of the depth of beauty that collectors so prize in this much rarer pre-industrial period furniture. So now, pre-industrial, pre-1840 period furniture is the type of furniture which is the most valuable today, and it differs in every way from what we qualify as an antique. It was not made in factories. It is an original work, and it was made by master furniture makers who served a clientele that expected their furniture to be art. That's why today, period furniture is a three-dimensional artistic representation of the mindset of each period, of the ideas and the aspirations of the time. And so if we finally look at the timeline of period furniture, when furniture is occurring at the height of its art, it logically situates between two key technological points in modern history. The end of the Gothic period, before which we weren't advanced enough to make too much beautiful furniture, and then the year 1840, after which we became so advanced that craftsmanship was eclipsed by industry. So of course there are some beautiful exceptions to this rule, but the rule is still a key framework in furniture history which orients collectors and which I hope will help you.